Hello, everybody. Uh, so we saw in the last few videos how we can integrate uh, these surfaces, right? We're integrating the volume um, when we're integrating the, the space between a, uh, a rectangle in the xy plane and our surface, so positive or negative depending on the, on the function itself. Um, but what if, what if the space you want to integrate over, the region you want to integrate over, isn't a rectangle, right? In, in, uh, when we have functions of one variable, right? We don't have a lot of choices in what we integrate over, right? We can take sections of the real line, right? Maybe we can take a couple of sections that's about as creative as we can get. But all of a sudden now, when we're talking about, let's give ourselves some axes here. All right, so here's my Z, X, and Y axes, right? With this, when our, our, the, the region we're integrating over now lives in the X, Y plane, right? We've just been doing rectangles here, but we're not limited that way anymore, right? So now I can do a region I can be much more creative with the regions and this creativity might have some meaning, right? That, um, you know, if this was some kind of, right? So there's a, there's a region I might want to integrate over, okay? Right, so there's lots of reasons we might have shaped uh, regions differently than rectangles, um, right? Depending on what these inputs, inputs represent, okay? Right, if you're looking at weather and you've got something like, uh, I don't know, air pressure and temperature, maybe there's certain regions that have special meaning for certain reasons. I'm not a meteorologist, I don't know. You might not just care about rectangles. And so all of a sudden, um, uh, we have to get more, do more interesting kinds of regions, okay? Um, for example, um, right, or without even having to think very hard, if I had the function f of x, y, equal to the square root of one minus x squared plus y squared, right? This is uh, half of a sphere, a hemisphere. And right, we'd be, re we'd be integrating, if we wanted to find out the volume of this hemisphere, we'd be integrating over this circle in the xy plane. Right now, of course, we have a formula from geometry for this, but this should be a doable problem in uh, using integration. So we wanna come up with something, uh, something to do in this situation. So let's start working through that, okay? So imagine I have a function. Let's see, let's give it a name. Uh, oops, function f of xy say z is equal to f of x, y. And let's draw a little picture of this function, right? So it's some, some surface floating in space here. And then let's say I want to integrate over some region here that I'll call d. Right. In other words, if I if I imagine extending this upward, right? There's some corresponding curve up above on the surface, and we want the uh, right. This thing might have some bumps and valleys in it, depending on the shape of the uh, of the surface. Right, and so we want to integrate over, we want to integrate the volume of the solid that I've drawn here, right? So it's kind of following the contours here, just imagine extruding it. The bottom end is gonna be flat, the top end will be following the, the shape of the surface. So here's what we'll do. We'll create a new function. I'll call it f of x, y. And the way we create it, is we say it's just equal to little f of x, y if the point input is in this region D and it's equal to zero 
if x, y is not in D? Um, well, let me say that a little more carefully. Let's, uh, well, yeah, I'm just gonna say not in D. We'll explain more about that in just a second. Sorry about that. Not in D, okay? So what does that function look like? Well, we've now taken the function F, except anywhere outside of this region D, it now is equal to zero. So the, 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 the value of the function outside of this little region, right? It's now a flat plane laying in the xy plane except at this one at this one region where it's equal to the original values of f okay then we can simply take we can go back to rectangles so now i'm going to draw a rectangle around all i need to know about this rectangle is that it encapsulates the region d so we're going to only be talking about bounded regions right now Let's call this rectangle R. And so more specifically, I should say that f of x is not in D, but sorry, xy is not in D, but xy is in R, right? So it's one of the points in the interior of this rectangle, but not in the, except for in this region here, right? We also should say R, of course, should live with, um, Actually, well, never mind. Thought I had to add something else. I don't need to. This is fine. So, what we should notice is this function now, if you look geometrically, the value of the integral of this capital F over the rectangle R should still represent the volume of this solid because outside of this solid, the function is just zero. So, it's not adding anything to our computation. Okay? And so what we can say is that, remember what we originally wanted to compute was the double integral, the inter integrate over the region D, F of X, Y. And what we've constructed now is a function, capital F of X, Y, that if we integrate it over a rectangle, gives us the same value. Um, we also might notice this function capital F is discontinuous at this boundary, right? It jumps from the value of the function little f to zero, right? So unless little f was already zero or just bending away from zero at those boundaries, it's going to be discontinuous there. You might remember that our definition for integration said f had to be continuous, but I made a little qualifier that's saying actually it can be discontinuous at a finite number of continuous curves um, and and this is what this is one of the reasons we talk about that right the fun this is fine to have this dropping down here um, as long as the boundary of d is what we'll call well behaved and i'm not going to go into the details of what that means that's beyond the scope of what uh, i'm trying to do in this series of lectures but suffice it to say without constructing a function uh, very purposefully to break this, we shouldn't run into a problem um, with the, the boundary being too, too ill-behaved. Um, okay, so let's talk about the types of regions that we'll see, uh, that this, this is what I've called D here, and, and more specifically, how we're actually gonna integrate it. Because what we're doing, this is, this is all well and good theoretically, we're just saying, oh look, we know how to do things on rectangles. Here we've got a shape. We can just draw a rectangle around it and just play pretend that we were integrating over a rectangle the whole time, right? And that works in terms of theory, but how do we actually do one of these things? How do we actually compute an integral over one of these regions? So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at uh, one thing we can do here. Oh, sorry, well, let's, let's take a look at uh, the situations in which we can actually compute these. And there's gonna be two types of regions uh, that we're gonna focus on computing over. So type one, this is gonna be the region D defined as the points X, Y, such that 
x is pinned between two values, and y is pinned between two functions. I'm going to call them g1 of x and g2 of x. Okay? So um, where, I should add, where g1 and g2 are continuous on a b okay so let's draw a picture of what exactly i mean by this so there's a few ways this can work out all right so now i'm just drawing the xy plane remember all i'm talking about right now is the region the function itself is going to be floating above or below this thing so i might have so here's x between a and b and maybe my region can be defined by two functions this way, right? This would be g2 of x. This would be g1 of x. And the region we would be talking about here, right? We would pin x between a and b, and y has to live between these two functions. So we get a shape, right? We get this kind of, of a thing, right? Or it could be the case And again, I'm drawing these all in quadrant one just for convenience. There's no, there's no reason they have to live there. We might get something like the following, right? Maybe I have a function, or maybe I have a region that looks like this, where here's A and here's B, right? And my, so the region I'm talking about, right, is in between these two. I have to think of these as two different functions, right? So this might be something like a, a parabola in terms of, of y squared, right? X equals y squared transforms, shift it around a little bit. But I'd have to, uh, divided into two different functions because this isn't a function of x as written because it, it fails the uh, vertical line test. Each input except for the one at the end here has two outputs. So we would think of the top half of this as g2 of x and the bottom half as g1, oops, g1 of x. So that's another kind of region we can have and or another kind of type one region or maybe it could look something like this where our two functions actually meet up, right? So G2 is on top, G1 on the bottom. And again, we're trying to integrate over this region between them, okay? So this is what, uh, what this will look like. And then when we think about creating this function, capital F, we simply need to draw a rectangle around these regions. Though you'll see in a moment, we're not actually going to have to do this. It's just, in theory, that rectangle has to encapsulate it, right? You could draw it as small as you want, as long as it captures all, uh, all of, the, of the points um, of the points in question. All right, so now let's think about how we would actually compute these things. So let me erase some things. I wanna keep these drawings. Well, let's go to, no, I'll do it on this page. Sorry, I'm just trying to decide how to organize. I wish I could carry these to another page. I guess we can do without this drawing for now. All right. And let's move this stuff over. All right, so here's our three regions. How do we actually compute these things? Well, here's where it gets fun. So remember what we're trying to do. I want to integrate over the region D, my function f of x, y. So I, what I will do is integrate 
the function capital F over the region R, right? And so remember what R is, R is the rectangle um, around the region D, right? But this is going to be equivalent to, since outside of D, this is, uh, and actually we can draw the rectangles. I should have drawn them lining up right with A and B. From, for the X values, we're gonna go simply from A to B. And for the Y values, let's call these C and D, the top and the bottom of our rectangle. Um, F of X, Y, DY, DX. But now let's just consider this inner integral for a moment. This is the integral C to D, F of X, Y, right? Well, we can now think of this as a function as a single variable with X as a constant. And what do we know is that if our if our function, if the value of y is outside, is above or below these, the function g1 or g2, this function is equal to zero. So it's equivalent to integrating between these two functions. And between those two functions, capital F is just equal to lowercase f. Okay. So we're using the bounds of our boundary as functions as the limits of integration. All right. And what this all adds up to is, let me write the big takeaway. We say, and then we'll look at a picture that might help understand what's happening here. If F is continuous on a type one region D such that D is equal to all points X, Y such that uh, X is between A and B, and y is pinned between these two functions of x. Uh, as described previously, so they're going to be continuous on an interval. Then the integral of f of x, y, dA over the region D is equal to the integral from A to B. In the double integral where we go from A to B and then G1 of X, G2 of X, F of X, Y, DY, DX. Okay. And without as much explanation, because it's the same idea in a different direction, we can talk about type two regions, which just does everything except in the other direction. So for instance, if this was the region I was talking about, this was D, we could say that Y is trapped between C and D, and we could call these functions X equals H2 of Y, and X equals H1 of Y, right? So the same idea, we're just looking at it sideways. We're, now we're pinning X between two functions instead of Y between two functions, right? X is always, is always right pinned between these two and then Y gets added up C to D. So uh, in that case, we can say um, if D is equal to X, Y, where we have Y trapped between C and D and X trapped between two functions of Y, then we'll do the same thing in the other direction.
except now we're integrating with respect to x and then y. Okay, so there's a lot of notation sitting here. Let's, let's take a look at a picture and then do an actual problem uh, to, to try to get an idea of what we are, um, what we're doing here. It's a little bit confusing, I think. All right, so here's, here's the picture. Uh, let me share this with you. Let's expand it. All right, so here's a function. This is the function f of x, y equals y squared times x. So this red surface is the function, right? The, the region D is shown here on the left is between the function y equals negative x and y equals x squared. So here it is graphed in the x, y plane. Here you can see it in this, in the x, y plane as part of the three dimensional, right? So it's floating, it's below the surface. We can see it, we can see it there. And the idea is we're gonna integrate y in the y direction between these two functions. And what that really pops out for us is an area function, right? So for instance, when x equals one, here's what it looks like to integrate y from negative x to x squared. So that's going left to right. Let's see, this is a little tricky to think about. Let's get, right. So we're integrating y from here. This is where y hits negative x. Here's where it's at x squared. Those are limits in the xy plane. We integrate between those two limits up to the surface. So this, this little shape with the green bars, that's like an integral um, in, in, in the, uh, for a single variable function, right? Where we're integrating uh, where z is the function of y, right? We're kind of thinking of x as a, as a, uh, as a constant, okay? Then after we get this area function, it's, it's spitting out an area function telling us for each value of x, what is the area of a slice of y? Then we'll integrate over x. So I'm changing the x values. I'm going fat backwards because it's easier to look at, right? Really what happens is we start at zero, which we're looking straight at the origin there, and we integrate from zero to one. And for each value of x, we get a different area function uh, in terms of y and the area below this surface um, for each value of x between those two functions of x, okay? So it's, it's tricky to think about, for sure. I definitely took a long time to understand what was happening here. But, but we are, let's look at it from this way maybe. Again, this, the first part of the integral where we integrate with respect to y spits out what I like to think of as an area function. And then remember when we do those volumes of rotation, if you integrate over the area function at each place, in this case, each place is each value of x, we're adding up all those areas to get the volume, right? There's details in there I'm ignoring. We had to go through all that stuff about slicing and making slabs and all that kind of stuff, but it is the same kind of idea. So this inter-integral, the one shown down here, is producing the area function for us. And then we add up all those area functions from zero to one um, in the x values. So let's do this integral. And this is the big takeaway, right? I think understanding these ideas sometimes happens after you've done a whole bunch of uh, uh, just, you know, plug and chug problems. So let's do this problem. Uh, and see how we work through all these little details. Let me get back to the whiteboard. Let's see, here we go. All right, so let's write up this problem. We're gonna do, uh, we wanna integrate the function f of x, y equals y squared x over the region D, which is x, y, such that x is between zero and one. 
and y is between negative x y and x squared. Okay. So we're just going to follow that, that rule that we got that told us what we do. We're going to take from A to B, then from G1x, G2x, F of xy, dy, dx. So I've just copied the rule we, came, we, we started before, uh, we stated before. And so x is pinned between A and B. In this case, it's 0 to 1. Y is pinned between negative x and x squared. The function is y squared x dy dx. Okay. Let's, let's do this, some of this work on the side, right? It's hard to do all these things at once. So remember with these double integrals, we start in the inside and work out. So let's come off to the side and do this integral first. Negative x to x squared, y squared, x dy. So this x here is a constant, okay? So we treat it like a constant. The antiderivative of y squared is one third y cubed. We've got the constant x, let's just move that to the front. Put it on top of this, x over three. We're evaluating this from negative x to x squared. So now I've got x over three times y cubed, and we're putting x squared into y cubed, and then we're putting negative x into y cubed. Right, so just if these were numbers, five and two, I would put them into y cubed, I'm putting in x. So I got x over three, I get x to the sixth, I'm gonna get plus x cubed, or one third x to the seventh plus x to the fourth, okay? So this is now replacing this red box. Right, that was the evaluation of that integral. So I can replace this with one third x to the seventh plus x to the fourth dx. I can bring the one third to the outside. This is now just a regular old derivative from single variable calculus. We're integrating over a pretty simple polynomial. We'll get one third. We're gonna get one eighth x to the eighth plus one fifth x to the fifth evaluated from zero to one. This is gonna give me one third times, well, when I put one in, the x to the eighth and the x to the fifth are just one. So I get one eighth plus one fifth. When I put zero in, it's all zero. So we get this. And if you work this out, you get 13 over 120. And that's it. So Although it might look strange when we put these functions in, um, we treat them just like numbers when we do our evaluating of our integrals, okay? And this, this here replaces the red box there. This is what I was calling the area function before. It's telling us for each value of x, what is the area? Right, we've, got, we've got our surface. We've got our region D, right? So our X axis and our Y axis here, here would be our Y axis, here's our X axis. This function here is saying, if I pick a value of X, what is the area of this shape, right? The, the, the one that's between the two values of this function up to the surface. That's what this function is telling us. And then we add that function up for each value of x from a to b, right? So it's very similar uh, in concept to what we did when, we do, when you do volumes of rotation, right? That's something most people uh, uh, do during single variable calculus and you, uh, it's the same sort of idea. Okay, I'll do some more videos with some other examples, um, but this is the, this is the basic concept. Uh, all right, that's it. Thanks everybody.